I think Colombia has been a little bit different than, than a lot of places in, in with respect to the growth, with growth. I mean, Colombia's growth has been pretty potent. It's been very good growth. Um, and, uh, and we've seen that growth in, uh, in the businesses that service our clients. We've seen uh, a lot of growth and we've seen growth in the banks and, um, and we've seen the economy rebounding. Exceptions that we can talk about, obviously, um, but even employment is coming back. We not particularly proud of our employment numbers per se, but it, but they're coming back. They're coming back. I mean, it'd be much worse if our numbers weren't that good, and then after quarantines were over, they were even worse than they are now. But they're coming back. So. That's more or less how, how we change the way we do business. Um, we are back to full steam um, infrastructure. We are working very hard and it's, and it's working very well. Uh, loan growth is performing very nicely. The bank in Central America is doing wonderfully well. Uh, and the banks here are meeting and exceeding their budget. So, so I and and our our non-financial sector, as I said, you know, hotels are, are coming back, which is good. The the, the tourism business, uh, agribusiness, which is the other business that we have, you know, it's being um, it, it's receiving a lot of momentum from the fact that, as we know. A big chunk of inflation is is food inflation, and that's what we produce in the agribusiness: uh, soybean oil, uh, cattle, uh, fisheries, etc. And and what we've seen, and, and rubber, and there's a shortage of rubber in the world right now. So so we're seeing the, the commodity prices rising, and with those, our agribusiness is doing well. As I said, infrastructure is doing well. Hotels, hotels are back to black, and the gas transportation business is doing well. So all in all, you know, I, I'm afraid of, of other things, but in terms of our business, I I can't complain. Uh, we still have a year to uh, to go, and uh, or the rest of this year to go, and and you know, we can talk about the the points that are concerning uh, the twin deficits all over the place. Uh, inflation, obviously, even the exchange rate and the volatility we've seen in the, in the last few days, that's concerning. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But the rest, I, I really, I, I won't complain. There are two things that differentiate a lot fintechs from established banking businesses, and I call them the asymmetries. There is an expectation asymmetry and there's a regulatory asymmetry. And um, what I've worked on is on at least on trying to close the gap as much as I can in the regulatory asymmetry. And, and let's be frank, when banks have to respond to Basel III, uh, when we have to watch every penny of our capital basis to make sure that we comply with capital ratios with that are ever increasing. It's very tough to compete with somebody who has absolutely no concern for capital. Uh, in a lot of these fintechs, what the, the buzzword is, is the cash, the cash, uh, the burn ratio, what they call the burn ratio, which is how much money can you spend over any revenues every month? For God's sake, I mean, how do you run a business that way? But that's that's what's happening. And and what you have in, in the shareholder bases have changed a lot. If if you look at our shareholder base, as you absolutely know, my father started this business and he's still you know very focused on. You know, he doesn't operate, he doesn't get involved, but he's very focused on where are my dividends, you know, obviously. And 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 I get paid to produce profits that drive dividends. You know, he's an entrepreneur, but but that's that's how he made his money. And he never got 
a penny of seed money or of the A funding, um, whatever you call them, or the B funding or the C funding or the D and E, that didn't exist. You made money, enough money by having costs much less than your revenues so that you would make an, an excess of cash so that you can buy a house and then put the rest into the business. And then you would bet the house again. And you would do that year after year after year. That's the old traditional, the old way of doing business. Today, you turn 17, but you're a genius. You can really program. You're a great coder. And you have this beautiful idea. So you go to SoftBank. And SoftBank gives you a billion dollars because, hey, you, you're cute. You're good looking. You have a great idea. And you promise a ton of clients. And then SoftBank says, but you know, it's a thousand million dollars. So make sure that they last at least a year. So you go back with a commitment of making a thousand million dollars last at least a year. And obviously I'm making fun, but so that's changed a lot. That's the expectations asymmetry. So I can do something about the regulatory asymmetry and we're doing it and we're doing stuff about it. Um, but you have to learn how to live with this new business because you can't just do the ostrich thing and put your head in the ground. So what we've been able to do, and we're doing pretty successfully is that we've been able to talk to some of these kids and we've been able to engage them in a different way. Basically we're saying, guys, when you thought about your business, let's be honest. You thought about this grandiose idea. You're a you're whiz kid you know exactly how to code and you've produced this very attractive piece of software, this app, whatever you wanna call it, that is digital end to end, that consumers look with very benevolent eyes because, hey, it's great, I don't have to talk to anyone and I get, and I get run through this app in 15 minutes, I can get a loan, et cetera, et cetera. And I say, that's, that's really valid. And banks don't have the best reputation for that and we shouldn't. Because for so many years, we've been remiss, but we're coming back. And we'll talk about our digitalization efforts lately. So what we've been able to do with these kids, I call them, is we've been able to say, your interest should really not be to amass amount, a, a, a large amount of, of borrowers on your books. You should really be out to make sure that you can produce, you can originate as much as you can without having to really fund yourself, and especially, and that's especially true in these moments when, when funding rates are going up. So we're saying, let us fund you, not as investors, you know, because we probably won't ever agree on the price of your business. Deal with the soft banks of the world, get all the money from them, you know, get the best valuations ever, but let us fund your business in the sense you originate, because honestly, you're becoming better originators than we are. And we'll buy everything as long as you underwrite using our criteria. And it's working. It's working out nicely. Uh, it's still a small portion of our origination, but it's growing. And you have so many of these new fintechs running around doing this thing. And a lot of them, they've come to realize that. They've come to say, you know what? You're right. We, we never envisioned being in the collections business. We never envisioned being the guys calling on a Sunday night saying, hey, you forgot to pay your, your monthly payment. A lot of them have just awesome originating machines and they're very, they do very well with that. So that's fintechs. Um, so my, I think my, my conclusion is you can't fight against them, for God's sake. They're a reality. They're happening and they're good. So you better be able to find a way to work with them. But the good thing is that most of them they don't, they don't really want to drive you out of business. They don't, they don't really want to, to become full-fledged banks with uh, stuffy people running them and stuff like that. They, they want to remain young forever and make their first $100 million before they turn 19 and retire. You know, and Jesus, I envy them. I would, I, would, I would have loved that 40 years ago, but, you know, I didn't get to do it. They're basically two candidates that seem... Seems that, that they're going to go on to the second presidential round. And um, 
uh, it's, it, you know, you hear one and you hear the other and uh, definitely they're, they're talking about different things. But, you know, Colombia has always been so rational when it comes to that. I mean, not in a lot of things. We're irrational in a, in a lot of stuff and, and we've gone through terrible times. But when you look at, at the way the country has been managed for very many years, it's been sort of in a rational way. Um, Congress has always been a big part of making things stay rational. And um, I don't think this will be the exception. Um, and I think both candidates are very smart, very smart from what I can tell. They're very incredibly smart. And I think that when you're that smart, you have to, to do, act accordingly. Um, and um, so I, and, and, you know, one of them can talk about uh, oil is bad and, and, and it's not green. Absolutely, I totally agree with him. I think anybody would agree with him. But is it exactly now the moment to stop all, all exploration or to, for example, stop uh, production, to stop refining? I have a tough time believing that, that, um, that regardless of what his convictions are, and, and his convictions, I think, are spot on. I think, yeah, you, you, we have to keep cleaning the, the planet or we're going to be screwed. But you have to also see your reality and, and you have to live within the realms of your reality. And if, um, and I think he's smart enough to realize that. Um, what we've seen in businesses, the economy is growing and everybody writes the, the growth of an economy, regardless of what they say, uh, the economy is growing businesses are growing, they're doing well, they're profitable. Um, so I think that as long as that keeps happening, we um, will see more or less the same that is happening today. Times of uncertainty, yes, yes, times of uncertainty, of course, because we are a country accustomed to one way of doing things and, um, and there's at least a probability that we might have to do them in a different way.